Thank you for joining me. This is Tammy Morrison and I am live and I am going to read from The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. But those of you, if you are stumbling across my page and you don't know who I am, I am Tammy Morrison. I am an angel intuitive. I love to help people to connect to their soul, to the essence of who they are and to rise up like the phoenix that they are. I love to help people to heal from all kinds of things, everything. I'm super excited about it because I know that it is possible because we were created in God's image and his likeness. So without further ado, I'm going to start reading from chapter eight is where I left off, The Science of Getting Rich, Wallace D. Waddles. Chapter eight, thinking in the certain way. Turn back to chapter six and read again the story of the man who formed a mental image of his house, and you will get a fair idea of the initial step toward getting rich. You must form a clear and definite mental picture of what you want. You cannot transmit an idea unless you have it yourself. Okay, hold on. All right, probably better. <laughs> it went all the way up to chapter 15, y'all. <laughs> so now let me take it back down to chapter eight, which is where we were. Super, super grateful for that. All right. <laughs> okay. You must form a clear and definite mental picture of what you want. You cannot transmit an idea unless you have it yourself. You must have it before you can give it. And many people fail to impress thinking substance because they have themselves only a vague and misty concept of the thing that they want to do to have or to become. It is not enough that you should have a general desire for wealth to do good with everybody has that desire. It is not enough that you should have a wish to travel, see things, live more, etc. Everybody has those desires also. If you were going to send a wireless message to a friend, you would not send the letters of the alphabet in their order and let them let him construct the message for himself. Nor would you take words at random from the dictionary. You would send a coherent sentence, one which meant something. When you try to impress your wants upon substance, remember that it must be done by a coherent statement. You must know what you want and, but, and be definite. You can never get rich or start the creative power into action by sending out unformed longings and vague desires. Go over your desires just as the man I have described went over his house. See just what you want and get a clear mental picture of it as you wish it to look when you get it. That clear mental picture you must have continually in mind as the sailor has in mind the port to which, toward which he is sailing the ship. You must keep your face toward it at all times. You must no more lose sight of it than the steersman loses sight of the compass. It is not necessary to take exercises in concentration, nor to set apart special times for prayer and affirmation, nor to go into the silence, nor to do occult stunts of any kind. These things are well enough, but all you need is to know what you want and to want it badly enough so that it will stay in your thoughts. Spend as much of your leisure time as you can in contemplating your picture, but no one needs to take exercises to concentrate his mind on a thing which he really wants. It is the things you do not really care about which require effort to fix your attention upon them. And unless you really want to get rich so that the desire is strong enough to hold your thoughts directed to the purpose as a magnetic pole 
holds the needle of the compass, it will hardly be worthwhile for you to try to carry out the instructions given in this book. This method, the methods herein set forth are for people who desire for riches is strong enough to overcome mental laziness and the love of ease and make them work. The more clear and definite you make your picture then and the more you dwell upon it, bringing out all its delightful details, the stronger your desire will be. And the stronger your desire, the easier it will be to hold your mind fixed upon the picture of what you want. Something more is necessary, however, than merely to see the picture clearly. If that is all you do, you are only a dreamer and will have little or no power for accomplishment. Behind your clear vision must be the purpose to release it, to bring it out in tangible expression. And behind this purpose must be an invincible and wavering faith. And the thing that the thing is already yours, that it is at hand and you have already take possession of it. Or you have only to take possession of it. Live in the new house mentally until it takes form around you physically. Yes, <laughs> that is amazing. I'm doing some commentary here. This is not in the book, but that is amazing because that is exactly what I have been doing and I'm so excited about it. And I'm at a place now where I can actually lay down in my bed and know that I'm laying in my bed in my new house. It's so exciting and I'm so grateful for being able to do this. So if you will just start, I know it feels silly and sounds silly at first, but if you will just start, I promise you, you will begin to feel that thing so strongly because now it's like, as soon as I lay down in that bed, <laughs> I know that it's the bed in my new house. So carrying on in the mental realm, enter at once into full enjoyment of the things you want. Whatsoever things ye ask for when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them, said Jesus. So Jesus is telling us that as long as we are believing as we are praying. So typically that scripture is so misread and it is so misunderstood because Typically, people are thinking that when you ask for things, then you believe, but it's actually the opposite. You believe when you ask. Before you even ask, you already believe that you have them. You already know that it is yours, that that is something that you have desired. You have spoken it and you know that it is yours. It is yours just as, as good as this hair is mine. It is yours. It is yours. See the things you want as if they were all actually around you at all the time. See yourself as owning and using them. Make use of them in imagination just as you would use them when they are in your tangible possessions. So if you are imagining your beautiful new home or as I am imagining and and lying in and stepping in and feeling my new spa pool that is going to accompany my new home. That is what I desire. I have done the research. I know exactly what they cost. I know what I need to do. I know all of these things because I have already been in that spa pool in my imagination. I've already been there. It feels magical. I love the way it feels on my body. I love the way I feel when I sit in that spa pool. And it is a spa pool, so you can actually swim in it. You can actually sit at the hot tub. It is one of the most amazing things, and I felt it, and it feels so good. I love it. I have actually already been there in my imagination, in my mind. So take possession of it. Dwell, let's see, dwell upon your mental picture until it is clear and distinct. And then take the mental attitude of ownership toward everything in that picture. Take possession of it in mind, in the full faith that it is actually yours. Hold to this mental ownership. Do not waver for an instant in the faith that it is real. And remember what was said in a preceding chapter about gratitude. Be as thankful for it all the time as you expect to be when it has taken form. 
So be in that gratitude state even before it has taken form. When it is a form in your imagination and when it is a form in your mind, take gratitude for that. Be grateful for that. I am so grateful for my spa pool. It feels magical on my skin. I absolutely love to lay in it. I'm a back, back, um, back swimmer, back floater, whatever. I love to lay down and do the back float in my spa pool because it feels so good for me and it's good for my body and it's healing. And I'm super, super grateful that you are joining me here today in my spa pool. How about that? And remember, um, what was said in a preceding chapter about gratitude, <laughs> be as thankful for it all the time as you expect it to be when it has taken form. The man who can sincerely thank God for the things which as yet he owns only in imagination has real faith. He will get rich. He will cause the creation of whatsoever he wants. You do not need to pray repeatedly for things you want. It is not necessary to tell God about it every day. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Said Jesus said, said Jesus said to his pupils, For your father knoweth that ye have need of these things before ye ask him. So that is also something that we have to take into account of that our father, God, God is they, them, him, whatever it is that you decide, universe knows that we have need of these things before we ask. Your part is to intelligently formulate your desire for the things which make for a larger life and to get these desires arranged in a coherent whole and then to impress this whole desire upon the formless substance which has the power and the will to bring you what you want. You do not make this impression by repeating strings of words. You make it by holding the vision with an unshakable purpose. And purpose is capitalized to attain it and with steadfast and faith is capitalized that you do, do attain it. The answer to prayer is not according to your faith while you are talking, but according to your faith while you are working. You cannot impress the mind of God by having a special Sabbath day set apart to tell him what you want and then forgetting him during the rest of the week. You cannot impress upon him by having special hours to go into your closet and pray. And if you then dismiss the matter from your mind until the hour of prayer comes again. So for me, I have decided that I am a walking prayer. And that is my intention that I set every single day for myself is that I am a walking prayer. I'm a walking prayer. So I am constantly in prayer. And that is that is an intention that I have set for myself, because that is where I am destined to be. You cannot impress him by having special hours to go into your closet and pray. If you then dismiss the matter from your mind until the hour of prayer comes again, oral prayer is well enough and has its effect, especially upon yourself in clarifying your vision and strengthening your faith. But it is not your oral petitions which get you what you want. In order to get rich, you do not need a sweet hour of prayer. Woo! Let's say that again. In order to get rich, for the people in the back, in order to get rich, you do not need a sweet hour of prayer. You need to pray without ceasing. That is the thing. And that is what I have decided. That is what I set my intention is to be a walking prayer, which is to pray without ceasing. And by prayer, I mean holding steadily to your vision with the purpose to cause its creation into solid form and the faith that you are doing so. Believe that you receive them. The whole matter turns on receiving once you have clearly formed your vision. When you have formed it, it is well to make an oral statement addressing the supreme in reverent prayer. And from that moment, you must in mind receive what you ask for. Live in the new house, wear the fine clothes, ride in the automobile, go on the journey and confidently plan for greater journeys. Think and speak of all the things you have asked for in terms of actual present ownership. Imagine an environment and a financial condition exactly as you want them. 
and live all the time in that imaginary environment and financial condition. Mind, however, that you do not do this as a mere dreamer and castle builder. Hold to the faith that the imaginary is being realized and to the purpose to realize it. Remember that it is faith and purpose in the use of the imagination which make the difference between the scientist and the dreamer. And having learned this fact, it is here that you must learn the proper use of the will. All righty, so that is all I have for you today as far as the science of getting rich. We will, I will read chapter nine on Thursday. If you join me, it'll be probably a little earlier than now because I think I have to work that day, but um, but I will read the chapter, uh, chapter nine. Matter of fact, let me put that in the comments so that I don't forget. Okay, so chapter nine is what we will be reading for the next one. I'll read that on Thursday. I'm going to come in and do a live on Thursday as well to talk about that and also to share. I have in the comments, I mean, in the description on Facebook, um, the link to grab your free meditation and sign up for my workshop that is happening October 17th through the 19th. Um, connecting your soul. It is going to be fire. It's going to be healing and activation. I'll talk a, a little bit about healing, the different ways. We're going to clear some limiting beliefs in that. It's going to be fire. I'm super excited about it and grateful that, you know, if you show up and join me. Otherwise, it'll be one. It's going to happen on um, same like this, Facebook and um, Instagram, I mean, uh, YouTube. It might also happen on LinkedIn if I can get that to work. I don't know. I have to see how it goes. But October 17th through the 19th, I would be grateful, super excited for you to join me um, in that, that healing activation. It's going to be fire. Cannot wait. And I would love it for you to join me. And also, if you have some things that you want to heal, I would love it if you would comment below and share those with me this way. I can include them in this healing activation because it's going to be three days, but that's not nearly enough for all the things that people are even asking about. Um, so, but I will get a start on it and I would love it if you would join me. And then if you would love to have a session with me, um, we can do a healing session. We can do a reading I do actually, I do actually a spiritual, um, spiritual talk session, and that is my healing session, which is amazing because I'll bring in different tools, whatever it is that you, that your body is is requiring and needing um, at that time. So again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I got to go. I have a call now. So have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, night, or weekend, whenever you catch this. And those of you that catch the replay, make sure that you honor me by hashtag replay. And I will honor you by acknowledging you for joining me. So again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This has been Tammy Morrison. I will be back on again on Thursday with chapter nine of the science of getting rich, Wallace D. Waddles. But I'll be on tomorrow with my Ebony and Ivory co-partner in crime. Um, we will be on tomorrow talking about spiritual growth. That is going to be fire. I would love it if you would join us. And if you are in a space where um, we have a group called the Narcissistic uh, Healing Lounge. So if that is an area that you have felt in and you feel called to us, join us there because we're going to be, be presenting more things and doing more stuff in, in that area because we realize that um, there's a need for it and people need um, healing and love and they need a space, a safe space to be able to talk about some of the things that they've gone through. So again, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.